Hey guys, how's it going? We've had some excitement going on the last few days in the vegetable garden area. Benjamin is inside asleep, so we decided to run out here and film a quick tour, um, even though it's super bright and sunny and it's very hot. So anyway, we had the arbors installed on either end of our vegetable garden. This has been uh, something that's taken a while because I had to mull it over. I couldn't decide if I wanted arbors or not and ended up deciding I did, at least on the sides for now. And I'm just thrilled with how they came out. So I wanted to show you how we um, had them attached and just how they look. Um, so they are 48 inches wide. I can't remember the exact height, but you can see I'm like 5'4" like on a good day um, so they're pretty nice and tall and they're made of cedar or rosewood do you remember Aaron what they're made of yeah dang well I don't really it doesn't really make much difference to me I'll put it up on the screen uh, I'll look them back up but we did get them in um, in a natural color I just wanted to make sure that they were wood so I could stain them the same color as the fence is here I wanted it to look like they incorporated nicely um, so if you come this way I'll show you how we got uh, install them. We just had to have some fresh dirt brought in so you can see my foot just went like right down in it. Um, but right here there's some metal L brackets. So these posts right here, these are part of the fence. These are cemented into the ground like they are stout and sturdy. So I wanted to make sure that even though this came with stakes, it came with four stakes for either end, I wanted to make sure it's like not going anywhere because we get a ton of wind. Uh, it comes from this direction right here and I just wanted to make sure they were just gonna stay put. Now imagine that these North Pole Arborvitas are a 10 to 15 foot wall, green wall. So that's gonna be blocking everything back behind eventually. Uh, and I'm just, I can't wait for that day because I think it'll all look like I can see it in my mind. I can see this whole area, how it looks with a green wall behind it. I think it's gonna be really, really beautiful. Um, so the other one is on the other side here. So I've only got the two for now, one on either end. I decided not to put one in the front for a couple reasons. First of all, it does come out from our fence, uh, I think like 20-ish, a little over 20 inches. Um, and that is our driveway on that side of the vegetable garden. And I didn't want to take up too much space, but I put containers there anyway. You can see them if you um, look right up front here. There are a couple containers that come out at least as far as the arbor would. So in the end, I could put an arbor up there, but I want it to look like it's incorporated. Up here, I can't really heavily landscape. I put in this um, like little row of Sweet Romance Lavender here, and that is about as far out as I want to go into the driveway. So I didn't want an arbor to look like it's kind of sticking out like a sore thumb. I kind of want it to be incorporated into landscape, which is what's gonna happen on either end. I'm gonna cut out deeper flower beds. There'll be a whole bunch of stuff planted. I'm actually gonna plant the roses today. I'll show you what I'm putting on the arbor, the, the variety of rose. I think it's gonna be really pretty. But those will look, I think, a little bit more blended into the landscape instead of just sticking up. Um, but you know, it might be something I add in later. I would love to know what your guys' opinion is, whether or not we should put an arbor in here or not. Let me know. Let's go grab the roses. They're in the greenhouse actually. Also, Gorilla Cart sent out a couple of their garden carts for us to try out. There's a couple different sizes. There's this huge one with huge wheels, huge capacity. I actually kind of took apart a container inside here the other night, but you can hook this up to like the uh, yard a garden tractor that we have. Um, so I thought that that would be kind of nice. I haven't hooked it up yet to try that out. And then they sent this one out as well. Um, this one's got sides that are removable. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna grab this one. We'll try this today. And I would love to know if you guys want a formal review on these. We um, were kind of thinking about doing it, but I would love to know your opinion. So let us know in the comment section down below. So these are the roses that are going on the arbors. They're called Colette, Colette Climbing Roses. These are actually kind of a little bit aged but you can see one in its bud form, super pretty color, kind of that apricot pink, which I absolutely love. I've actually had these sitting in the greenhouse since last spring because I thought I was gonna use these somewhere else and I didn't end up using them. So I've just been hanging on to them. Poor things probably want out of their pots, um, but I'm gonna take these out there. I'll groom them up real quick because see they do need to be deadheaded and, and groomed and then we'll get them in the ground. All right, so I put one rose on this side of the arbor and then one right there. And you guys look at how pretty this is gonna be. I am so looking forward to them growing and kind of filling in around this arbor. I had Colette's in our old garden growing on an arbor and they were just so pretty. They look like a David Austin to me because of their high petal count. Um, they don't have quite as big of flowers as a David Austin, but they're just such a sweet um, climber and they get just clusters of these blooms all over on them. But like I said, I need to clean these up. And you guys, I don't really, 
like go by traditional rose pruning methods when I do climbers. You can see I just kind of go in there and clean them up. I just go down to maybe like three sets of leaves down and kind of just clip that spent bloom off. I'm gonna finish cleaning up these roses and then we'll start planting. All right, got my hole dug. And if you're planting a climbing rose up against a structure or an arbor like this one, you want to dig your hole and plant it pretty close to it um, because you want it to take off and start growing right on that arbor or whatever it is that you've got it growing on. So I've dug my hole about center with the arbor and then I'll just plant my rose right there in it. I did run into some tree roots. I get asked that quite a bit, how I don't ever seem to run into tree roots or rocks or things like that. I do run into them. Like, look at this one right here. This was actually going straight through the hole but this belonged to the old elm tree that we had removed that was pretty much like right in the center of the vegetable garden area. So we've been dealing with that. Like every time I dig a big hole, like for this hydrangea tree right here, I ran into tree roots, but I knew that that's what it was from. So I don't mind cutting them. When I'm digging closer to another type of tree, um, I will usually leave the roots and then usually you can fluff the roots out of whatever you're planting and kind of go around the tree roots that you find. That's what I do anyway. Um, so now that the holes are dug, I'm going to add some starter fertilizer. I always add biotone, which you guys know, you see me use this a ton. You could also use rose tone though. I grabbed this one just so you could see it. Um, this is what I'll start using after the rose plants are established. Um, but if I didn't have biotone, I'd go ahead and use rose tone. Either one works really, really great. I just have such great luck with the biotone starter. So I don't even measure it anymore. I just kind of like dump it in there. Kind of mix it in the bottom. Let me grab my rose here. Now these are peat pots, but they're waxed. So if we lived in a more wet or a humid climate, they would probably deteriorate a lot faster and I could plant the whole thing down in the ground. But I can't do that here because we're so dry, it would take years and years and years for them to um, deteriorate enough for the rose roots to come out. So I do want to remove it from this pot and all the weeds that are growing around the, the rose plant. I don't want those to continue growing. Okay. All right. So it actually doesn't look as root bound as I thought it was going to. Set it down in the hole, kind of check the level here. That looks about perfect. So I just backfill with my native soil that I dug out from around it already. And then I like to stand back and look at the position to make sure I like where it's at. Yeah, that's perfect. So I'm gonna finish getting this one in the ground and then I'll plant the rest of them, all three of them, and then we'll show you how it all looks. I got all the roses planted and that's about the time that Benjamin woke up from his nap. So I had to go in, get him up and have a little bit of a snack. And now we're gonna go show you what the roses look like on the arbors. Ta-da! So it doesn't look like much right now, but these roses will grow quickly and it is kind of warm right now. I'm not the most ideal time to plant. Uh, if I had the choice between now and either spring or fall, I would probably uh, choose one of the cooler months, but I do plant all year round. What I do is I just make sure to keep them really moist. I just keep the water going to them. Usually they do just fine. Um, so let's go take a look at the other side real quick. So the roses on this side are actually a little bit taller. I thought it would be kind of fun to show you how I start to train them on the trellis or on the arbor. So you can see that there's slats here. So what I do is I come in when they're young like this and they're not super woody and one handed it's a little bit difficult because this rose is kind of thorny, but I'll just kind of weave it like that in and out. So once it puts on a little more growth, I'll weave it back out and in and out all the way to the top. That's just what I do. Now, occasionally, if it's got like a main branch that's wanting to grow a little bit more away from the arbor, I will tie it. So I'll use garden twine or soft ties or something like that and tie it to the arbor and that way it kind of trains it that way. Um, pruning climbing roses is super easy. I showed you how I deadhead them. I just kind of shear them up, clean them up a little bit without really any like method. I just kind of make sure that they look clean. Um, I never cut them back all the way unless we have a really hard winter. I remember one time when I was younger, my parents climbing roses got really hit during one really cold winter. and We had to cut them all the way down almost to the ground. Um, and they come back uh, usually pretty nicely, but these I'll just let them grow up. And then every like uh, early spring, late winter, I'll come and just shear them kind of close to the arbor to keep them nice and tight but I'll never really take the canes all the way down unless I find some dead canes in there or dead growth and I will remove that. So that's pretty much it, you guys. I just wanted to show you this process, planting the, the roses, showing you the arbors. You guys, the, the type of black stain I used, I've been asked that quite a bit. It's a bare product that I got at Home Depot. There's three different levels of stain. It was either really opaque, 
really transparent or something in between. And I picked the in-between color. I cannot remember what it is off the top of my head, but I will put it on the screen for you uh, so you can see what it is that we used because I think it just turned out really beautiful. You can still see the wood grain through it, but it gives you that depth and that weight. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. What do you think, huh? You're not going to learn how to prune willows from your daddy. I will teach you how to prune a willow tree.